Hello, and welcome to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm Steve Smith, a.k.a. R. Dallas. This is Episode 4, where I'll be discussing guard clauses. Don't forget, you can follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter and provide feedback or ask questions there. I'll try to dedicate some time to answering questions in future shows. Now let's talk a little bit about guard clauses. When you're writing software, your methods should fail fast if doing so can short-circuit their execution. Complexity in our code makes it harder for us and others to understand what the code is doing. The smallest unit of our code typically is the function or method. You should be able to look at a given function and quickly determine what it's doing. This tends to be much easier if the function is small, well-named, and focused on one task. One factor that's constantly working against you as you try to keep your functions manageable is conditional complexity, that is, if and switch statements primarily. When these are not properly managed, these two constructs can quickly cause functions to shift from simple and easy to understand to long, obtuse, and scary. One way you can cut down on some of the complexity is through the use of guard clauses. A guard clause is simply a check that immediately exits the function, either with a return statement or an exception. If you're used to writing code such that you ensure that everything is valid for the function to run, and then inside of the if statements where you've checked that things are valid, you write the main function code, and then you write else statements to deal with error cases, then using guard clauses tends to invert your current workflow. The benefit is that your code will tend to be shorter, simpler, and less deeply indented in the editor. Imagine for a moment that you have a method that performs a subscribe operation, and it takes in three objects, a user, a subscription, and a term, or how long that subscription should last. Naturally, you want to ensure that these objects are not null before you start working with them. One way to structure the method would be to first check if the user is not null. Then inside of this if statement, check if the subscription is not null. And inside that statement, check if the term is not null. Now in this statement, we're nested in three deep. We are in what is sometimes referred to as the happy path for the function. Assuming the values of these objects are otherwise valid, the expected work of the function can take place in this block. Each of the different cases of invalid inputs should result in an appropriate exception being thrown, though, and so these require else blocks. There will need to be an else block for each of the not equal checks. So since we're deeply nested in and the third thing we checked was the term, when that if statement is done, we can add an else, which will refer to the term not equal check, and we'll throw an exception inside of that else block. When that one is done, we'll add another else check for the subscription not equal null, and we'll throw an exception there. And finally, we'll put an else block for the user not equal null check. When you're done, this code is going to have a fair amount of plumbing code and complexity that pretty much just adds to the noise of the function and obscures its true purpose, which was to subscribe a user to a subscription. So how can we refactor this to reduce the nesting and the else statements? The first way to address this is to eliminate the need for the else clauses altogether. You can do this by inverting the if checks and putting the exception throwing statements at the start of the function instead of at the end. The first thing you check is if the user is null. If it is, you throw an exception. There's no need for an else clause and no need for a nested if statement. You move on to the next argument. Check subscription, throw if it's null. Do the same for the term. When you're done, you have three simple if statements, none of which are nested, and no else clauses. The function now fails fast, and after the input checks, the happy path for the function is whatever remains until it exits. Another refactoring you can do to take this a step further is to use guard helper methods. So checking for null arguments tends to be a common enough task in strongly typed programs that you can probably encapsulate it in its own helper function and get a lot of reuse out of this function. I use a common static class that I call guard, which provides static helper methods for these scenarios. For instance, in the example that we just went over, I would want to throw an argument null exception with the name of whichever argument was null in each of the three possible cases. Thus, it's very easy to write a method, which I call against null, that simply takes in the argument and the argument's name and throws an argument null exception if the argument is null. This exception will bubble up and out of the calling method. When you implement this in the scenario I described, you end up with code that reads like this. The first line of the function would say guard.againstNull, 
And then in its arguments, you would pass in user, comma, name of, user, and then close the parentheses, and that's the end of that call. Similarly, the next line would say guard dot against null, subscription, comma, name of subscription. And the third line would say guard dot against null term, comma, name of term. With these three lines in place, you can now perform all of your null checks for this function's arguments, and then you can proceed on to perform the work of the function. You can add additional guard helper methods for any other common cases you need to check for, such as empty strings, negative numbers, invalid enum values, etc. Basically, if you notice that you're doing the same type of if checks over and over again inside your code base, look at that as an opportunity to try and eliminate that duplication and create a guard clause that can take care of those particular scenarios. If statements can take over your functions if you're not careful, making them much harder to understand and thus much harder to maintain. Cyclomatic complexity refers to the total number of paths through a given function and should be kept in the low single digits whenever possible. Using guard clauses is one simple way to tame complexity in your functions and keep them smaller, simpler, and easier to maintain. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. Please consider leaving a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. I'll see you next time on weeklydevtips.com.